recently, and this is there's been a whole spate of these to be honest, but there was another statue that was attacked, and um, this one, the Our Lady of Fatima statue in Washington, DC. Um, it's just outside the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, there's CCTV footage of somebody kind of hammering away at the head of, of the Blessed Mother, and then I think he chopped her hands off. And, you know, there's been a lot of these happening. And I think sometimes, I mean, I think it's always wrong, but sometimes when it happens to say someone like Junipero Serra, um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but Saint Junipero Serra, it's, I can see the thinking behind it, even though I feel the thinking is wrong because they've been told a bunch of things about him. They think he was a racist and so on, and then they, they attack. But when we see statues of Jesus and Mary um, being attacked, what can we attribute that to? Is it just kind of, is it sort of mental health issues? Is it just some kind of weird misguided anger at the church because there's so much negativity about the church and media? Why would someone go, for example, to a statue of the Virgin Mary and start wanting to, to take it down? I, I find that I struggle to understand that. Do you, do you know why that might be? Well, yes, no, I, I, I do. And I think, first of all, that the explanations you've given are, are, are very good ones. But those are certainly elements. Uh, people are misinformed. Um, there is some kind of projective rage against the church. Some it's justified in terms of the very bad behavior of the church institutionally and the, and the appalling things that happened to do with child abuse. Um, but, I, but again, I think it's quite, always quite important for us to decide what what kind of if you like which telescope we're going to look through which we spare, which what what lenses we're going to look through because we always we always have a choice we can interpret things sociologically politically um psychologically medically biologically uh, every time that we look at this human condition there are a number of different disciplines and insights we can use but one of the ones that we're worst at and we find most embarrassing is a, is a spiritual or metaphysical uh, lens and to my mind it, it's a no-brainer from a christian point of view that uh, our lady makes the devil very cross <laughs> and if our lady is who we take her to be and if the devil is who we find out that he is in the gospels and in tradition and the experience of the church um we all we ought as, as catholics to recognize that we live in a permanent state of metaphysical and spiritual war. Um, and the, it, in, during this war, the enemy often makes large inroads into the church. And so um, not, not all the inroads are the ones people think of. And I remember being quite um, struck when I discovered for the first time that I think the, the casualties to the Spanish Inquisition, which is often held up by atheists and secularists being a very low point in the church's history, as, in, as indeed it is. Uh, but I think 800 people were executed. Well, that's that's 800 too many. But if you compare that with people who um, Obama killed uh, as he attacked Afghanistan and uh, in his foreign policy, where there are the hundreds of thousands, the what the church did compared to what the state did is, is minimal. It doesn't make what the church did right. You know, the same thing is true when you compare uh, the, the deaths of progressive uh the progressive left in the 20th century they they come to nearly 200 million people um deliberately killed by an ideology i think one of the things christians often fail to understand is that we live in a in, in a spiritually contested place that's what the, the gospels tell us that very clearly st john tells it most clearly and um and our, our Lady, this is certainly my experience when it came to dealing with evil, uh, Our Lady is very powerful indeed, and so she enrages. Wherever, wherever evil has found a foothold or an entrance point or a platform or, or a sphere of influence, Our Lady makes, makes them very cross. And in fact, probably one of the interesting theological questions is why somehow, sometimes Our Lady is more provocative towards um, regarding evil than, than our Lord is. Um, and that there's another interesting theological question I've been thinking about for a few years, um, but you'll often find that statues of Mary provoke a far greater rage amongst people who are in some kind of way uh, energized by, by the demonic or by evil or by rage. Um, there, there, there's no overlap between all of those things. 
So I think I'm afraid I would simply say it's it's a it's uh, the statues of Our Lady act as a barometer uh, for the spiritual weather, and when it, we're the crisis, the spiritual crisis that we're in at the moment, as as we have willfully abandoned the responsibility and the virtues and the graces uh, uh, that the, the, we have inherited as a church, is that we're now in a in a very difficult spiritual conflict and we're on the back foot and one of the things the church needs to do is to work out how given our own analysis of the situation our own uh, resources um, how we how we reconfigure ourselves our attitudes our, our prayer life our, our penitence to, to deal with that because if we go much further more much further on the back foot we'll find ourselves in an increasingly beleaguered situation one i think that's that, that uh, pope benedict foresaw in that remarkable piece he wrote in 1979 about a, a shriven, diminished Catholic church.